And before I recognize uh, Mr. Duffy, I want to uh, th thank all of you for your patience. I haven't uh, seen one of y'all make a face yet uh, when these uh, different members are uh, uh, coming in, but uh, this is something that's very important to all of us. Uh, and so I, I do appreciate your patience. But I did want to ask just a couple of questions. Um, uh, Mr. Vanderweed, is the business philosophy of international insurance companies or European insurance companies any different than what you might say the philosophy of a domestic insurance carrier might be? Well, the, the insurance, internationally active insurance companies certainly do expose themselves to additional uh, risks that the purely domestic firms do not. They also have uh, additional diversification opportunities that the purely domestic firms do not. Um, but in our work uh, in the international regulatory space is to try to help make sure that we have a, a globally consistent supervision and capital framework for uh, the foreign firms that operate in our markets. Well, let, me, let me ask you a little bit different way. Is there a philosophy about what should happen if there was a failure, um, uh, who their allegiance might be to as far as uh, um, uh, what might happen uh, to the assets of that company? Uh, I, I'm not sure if I would draw a distinction between the Okay, let me, ask, let, let me ask you this. I know that our insurance companies, they're, they are liable for the policyholder. That's who they protect. My understanding is, on the European model, that they protect the creditors and not the policyholder, that the policyholder comes after the creditor. And in the United States, the policyholder is first. Is that your understanding? Yes, different uh, international insurance regulators have different objectives for their regimes, and I think this is going to be part of the challenge that we will have collectively as we uh, engage in those negotiations with the IAIS, is to make sure that our vision of the appropriate way to do insurance regulation is, the, is, is, is put forward in a powerful way and is convincing. But this is one of the challenges, not just in insurance, but in any kind of international negotiation, is to deal with the different objectives that different regulators have around the world and try to meld those into a framework that works, uh, you know, from our perspective, that works for America. So, you, so you're committed, uh, or whoever is doing the negotiating is committed to making sure that the policyholders uh, are put in first place. Yes, absolutely. That will be a key goal of ours. Mr. McCarty, um, do you foresee or do you or do the state uh, insurance commissioners have a fear that what they're negotiating uh, is only for these international uh, or companies that participate internationally? When they write the rules for that, uh, is it your fear that you may have to apply those same rules to all the insurance companies uh, that you regulate? And how would you do that? Would you uh, regulate different companies uh, in different ways? You raise a very valid point. I think uh, it's the it's the concern that companies have, the large internationally active groups, that may find them subject to higher capital standards or different enhanced policy measures. Their concern is that would put them at a disadvantage back home, where they're competing, whether it's homeowners or auto or business liability insurance, medical malpractice, or you name it. So the concern they have is they're certainly not going to put themselves at a disadvantage and would encourage that state legislatures apply those standards uniformly, which could have you know, consequences in the marketplace, both terms and pricing and product availability. Yeah, because you, you wouldn't want to treat one insurance company differently than uh, you would uh, treat another. And, and that's what I'm afraid would actually happen. And we want to make sure that 
uh, those policyholders, the people that pay the premiums, are the first to be protected. And, and can, I, can I circle back to something you mentioned earlier, which I think is the absolute key issue going into the discussions about an insurance capital standard, which is what is the guiding principle? Is the guiding principle policyholder protection, which from the U.S. perspective is a ground-up, entity-based ring fencing? You ring fence those assets so they're available. The other concepts that you have as an ongoing concern or creditor protection, very different policy measures and outcomes depending upon whether you are predicated on the policyholder protection, which we think is key. Thank you. Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Duffy.